Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Tenet is Christopher Nolan's latest, most mind-bending film, exactly the kind of palindromic timeline puzzle to take your mind off the fact that the people in the cinema sitting two rows down from you are logically the kind of people who care the least about how their public behavior affects others, and thus more likely to be on their phones, or talking, or general mask-lowering assholes. Yeah, I'm using this snob rant to stall because yes, spoilers ahead, I will be explaining the complex plot and timeline of Tenet in this video. I know no, many of you might not have seen the film yet. Some of you might not be able to, depending on where you live. Or maybe you're electing to wait until it is safer. All of that is fine. This video will be here waiting for you whenever you're able to see the movie, and then in doing so, injuring your brain, or hopefully not injuring your, you know, lungs or other people you're in the vicinity with. Okay, here we go. Tenet uses a timeline structure that I recently categorized as Type 4, This Always Happened Time Travel. That means that all the events of the story, including the act of time travel itself, are all fixed and predestined on a loop. They always happened. The time travel is what sets the events of the story in motion. Usually it features a character suddenly realizing, whoa, this always happened. However, unlike other predestined loop time travel stories like The Terminator, the time travel of Tenant is not an instantaneous jump to the past. It is time inversion. You have to continue to live and age in real time while the world reverses around you until you get back to your return point. You can also just invert objects and then invert them back in time so that those objects continue to exist further and further into the past for others or for your younger self to find. Bullets, gold, doomsday device, chunks. With this in mind, let's give an overview of this story. In the future, a scientist creates an algorithm to invert all of time. But like J. Robert Oppenheimer, who lived with guilt over his work in the Manhattan Project, this scientist encoded this algorithm into nine physical artifacts, scattering each artifact around the world, inverting them buried in radioactive hotspots, hoping that no one would ever go near those spots. And she took her own life to keep this secret. But when the Soviet Union collapsed, a man named Andrei Sater took a job digging up plutonium from a test site, and he dug up a container with gold and instructions to amass his resources and track down all pieces of this algorithm. Sater works on behalf of others in the distant future who want this man in the past to compile the algorithm artifacts and bury them in a tunnel caved in by an underground detonation in the Soviet secret city of Stalsk-12, where that algorithm would stay buried and undisturbed for 200 years so those future bad guys could dig it up, use that algorithm, them to continue that scientist's work in the worst possible way, inverting all of time to counteract the effects of things like global warming, saving their future by destroying our present in the past. And Sater planned to signal these future partners that the artifacts were in place by simultaneously killing himself. John David Washington, only ever named the protagonist in this movie, and his organization, Tenet, use this logic of inverted timelines to prevent this fate from happening and tie off all the loose ends so no one is none the wiser. So let's look at how each key player's timeline fits into this, starting with the character whose perspective we stay with, the protagonist. He begins on a CIA extraction operation at the Kiev Opera House, but he's saved by a mystery man who inverts a bullet from the floor through a guy trying to kill him, and that mystery savior runs off with a keychain dangling from his pack. The protagonist is then awakened and recruited to join an organization called Tenet, and he learns that certain objects have been inverted through time from the future. He tracks down the unique bullet casings to Mumbai, where he meets Neil and learns from Priya about a Russian oligarch, Andre Sater. And then he meets Michael Caine in London and briefs him about accessing Sater through Sater's wife, Cat, using forged Goya art that she got from an fair with a man named Arepo. It's a bit complicated, but Sater is now using this forged art as blackmail, keeping Kat from seeing her son. So they plan to steal this art from its secure vault at the Oslo airport, Rotus Security, by crashing a big old plane into it. Here things get tricky. See, deep in the vaults, protagonist and Neil enter this two-sided turnstile room, and then they scuffle with this mystery man. The protagonist fights him as the figure moves inverted in time, and blocking all the protagonist's move as if a step ahead of him, and then seemingly gets sucked out of a room by a jet engine. No kicks! Meanwhile, Neil chases a mystery man on the other side who moves directionally forward. He unmasks him, but then lets him go. Protagonist joins Cat and Sater on the Amalfi Coast, and he offers to steal for Sater the ninth piece of the algorithm, Plutonium-241, that he briefly had, but he lost in Kiev while that artifact is being transported in Talon. But in the middle of this epic heist, an inverted version of Sater uses hostage Cat to intercept that artifact from the protagonist. And they all end up in another turnstile chamber where Sater shoots Cat 
and then heads off inverted to intercept that artifact we just saw him take. But then Team Tenant Commando Ives explains that Seder was using what's called a temporal pincer, in which Seder's team inverts themselves from the future to know the end result of the mission and then invert back through that mission to intercept the prize. The protagonist decides to go after Seder, inverting all of them, and then he chases him down on the freeway, but he fails. That flipping wreck that he saw earlier was himself. And still inverted, they return to the Oslo airport. The protagonist uses the plane explosion to blast himself into the room and scuffles with his past self. And then he enters the vault turnstile. He runs from Neil. He gets an ambulance. And the future Neil wheels future Cat through the vault turnstile as well. And then all three are now moving forward in time in the past and are able to save Cat from her gunshot wound. Protagonist meets with Priya and learns of Seder's plan. So they end up forming a mission with Ives to go back to the Stalsk 12 detonation, where they use another temporal pincer to stop the conjoined algorithm from getting buried for those future evil dudes. So Ives and the protagonist in red lead the team to fight Seder's troops in Stalls 12, but then let that bomb explode so that no one will know anything was taken, while the other team in blue with Neil have inverted themselves from the future into this battle to extract that algorithm before it gets buried in the blast cave-in from the explosion. Protagonist and Ives make it to the algorithm with a bomb in the tunnel, but hit a tripwire and are trapped inside. And then there's a mysterious blue soldier dead on the ground who we find out is inverted. He has picked the lock on the gate and he takes a bullet for the protagonist and he has that same mysterious keychain on his backpack. And then Neil, having reverted himself, to move forward in the battle, pulls protagonist and Ives out of the tunnel with the algorithm. And then the three decide to break up the algorithm into three parts and go their separate ways, rehide the pieces, and then, you know, off themselves. But then Neil gives the protagonist his third, and he reveals via the keychain on his backpack that he was the mystery man who took the bullet from him in the tunnel, that he picked the lock, and that he was also the mystery man who reversed the bullet in Kiev. And he says that the protagonist was the man who first recruited him, that they have known each other for years. This is the end of a beautiful friendship, Neil says, paraphrasing the final line of Casablanca. But that friendship is just beginning for the protagonist, who in the future will establish the tenant organization to close this loop. And in the epilogue, protagonist fulfills his destiny by killing off Priya and watching as Kat picks up her son Max who is hinted to be a young version of Neil. Wong! Which is Nolan's way of saying, this always happened. And to explain how that all makes sense, we gotta look at the timelines from the perspectives of the other characters, Seder, Cat, Neil, surprisingly, this movie's holy family. Okay, so let's look at Seder's timeline. After discovering that inverted gold 30 years ago, he established himself as a power broker in post-Soviet Russia and spends three decades tracking down all the artifacts and building turnstiles all over the world for him to use. But his radioactive digging left him with inoperable pancreatic cancer and he goes insane. He's abusive to Cat and they fight on his boat in Vietnam. He's using that forged repo to blackmail her into never seen their son, Max. But then later on the Amalfi Coast, he meets the protagonist who saves him from Cat trying to drown him during a boat race. So he lets the protagonist steal the last artifact for him. But then of course he catches up to him, uses that temporal pincer to invert himself back to intercept the artifact. And he continues to invert himself back to that day in Vietnam, the day he intended to kill himself and let the world die with him and signaling his future partners that the algorithm was in place for them to find in the future. But of course in Stalls 12, Team Tenet foils those plans and he is shot and killed by Cat, slid off that deck and his body is towed away. So everyone assumes he has just disappeared. But how was Cat able to get the drop on him like that? Well, onto Cat's timeline. So when the protagonist first contacts Cat in London, she recalls the day of she and Sater's fight in Vietnam, and she remembers seeing a mystery woman dive off the boat as she was returning to it. Then later in Talon, Sater assaults her, inverts himself, drags her into his temporal pincer to snatch that artifact. Cat is left fatally wounded by Sater's inverted bullet. So Neil and the protagonist invert her, with all three rewinding back to the Oslo vault turnstile, where they revert back in normal time and they heal her wound. But then they invert all the way back to the day of the battle, and Cat, pretending to be her younger self, gains Sater's trust on the boat because he assumes the future version of her is dead. This is just the one he would know from this time. But she shows him her scar and shoots him, slipping his body off the deck and diving off, becoming the mystery diving woman that the younger version of herself saw. Now, the most complicated timeline is Neil's, and his brings it all together. So Neil first appears to the protagonist as a rookie operative in Mumbai, but he is actually much wiser than he lets on. He knows what kind of drink the protagonist likes, and when the protagonist tries to explain time inversion, Neil just kind of laughs it off with brainy references to positrons and entropy, mentioning that he has a master's in physics. This is because Neil is actually Max, the son of Cat, recruited and mentored in the future by the protagonist when he establishes the tenant organization 
organization. The two have known each other for years, and Max Neal was likely to spend his adult years studying the physics of entropy. And it's possible that the name Neal was acquired by Max taking the last four letters of his full name, Maximilian, and inverting them to become Neal. Now at some point in the future, Neal will invert himself to save the protagonist at the Kiev Opera House. He then reverts himself, moving forward normally, and makes contact with the protagonist in Mumbai. He helps him find Priya, then he helps him break into the Oslo Vault, where Neil chases future protagonists and unmasks him, realizing that it's a protagonist and this all must be part of some future inversion. Then Neil joins protagonists on the Talon heist, he helps rescue him alongside Ives, and then Neil inverts himself with Kat as they head back to Oslo. Neil waits for the protagonist to go in first, and then he takes Kat and himself through that Oslo turnstile, with all three of them now moving forward, just in the past. But then all three invert again, back to the day of the battle. Neil joins the inverted blue team, and notices that Ives and protagonists are headed into a tripwire, so he reverts himself in the nearby turnstile to try to warn them, but he's too late. And while snipping around the tunnel, he sees another future version of himself snipping around too. More on that in a second. But then Neil pulls protagonist and Ives out of the tunnel with the artifact, but he is not done inverting, folks. He hints to the protagonist that he'll help his blue team the next time around, and he leaves the protagonist with his third of the algorithm. And then he heads off to complete his final inverted loop through the tunnel, where his inverted self will pick the lock on that gate and takes a bullet for the protagonist ending his life. So Neil is kind of the Kyle Reese of the story, an agent who goes back in time to save his future superior and save the world. A world that, extrapolating the logic of this movie, has already been saved. But only if these agents decide to go forth with their missions. That's why secrecy is so important to tenant agents. Ignorance is our ammunition, as they say. Things only go according to the plan if characters don't know their destinies. It's also important for inverted travelers to avoid contact with their past selves, because if you think about it, each inversion creates three versions of your self-existence simultaneously. The version of you moving forward before you inverted, but then your inverted self moving past you, and then that inverted self reaches another turnstile, and then reverts so that now they're moving forward on another layer. And Neil's timeline compounds that. See, during the Battle of Stalsk 12, he was actually a child during that period, but he was also an inverted agent saving the protagonist in Kiev, and then he was a reverted agent chilling until Mumbai, moving on to Oslo and Talon, and then in Talon he inverts again back to Oslo, and then that same Neil reverts forward, but then shortly after inverts again to Stalsk. He reverted to move forward mid-battle, and then inverted once more to pick the lock and save the protagonist. That is at least six Neils existing at the same time, maybe even more. And along with the palindromic structure, you might have noticed some key words scattered throughout this film. The villain name, Seder, the opening scene at the opera, the Oslo security company, Rodas, Katz Forger, Arepo, and with Tenet, all these words come together to form the famous Latin Seder Square, a four-dimensional palindromic matrix found in the ruins of Pompeii and across Europe with an unknown origin and meaning. Max was said in this movie to be visiting Pompeii. Perhaps Nolan is suggesting that the Seder Square from history was a relic from the future, inverted back through time to start to give young Max slash Neil an idea of his future role in the fate of mankind. Look folks, there's obviously so much to this movie. So many visual details, so many layers of meaning. I'm eager to unpack it all, but it may take me a bit of time. In the meantime, if you have any further questions about the film, the best way to find me is on New Rockstar's official Discord server, which we offer to patrons of New Rockstars of any tier, even a dollar a month. Just go to patreon.com slash New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars, and hit that notification bell. Follow me on Instagram at EA Boss, follow New Rockstars, and thank you for watching. And uh, to those three a-holes in San Diego AMC who couldn't stay off your damn phones, the only reason I didn't get up to yell at you is I am you from the future, inverted, trying to make sense of Tenet by watching it backwards. This is what you have to look forward to. <laughs> have fun with that!